We're thankful, Father, for your day. A day that you have so given us. A day where we can look forward to an uncloudy day. A day filled with no more goodbyes, but always howdy howdy. We are thankful, Father, for this day. We pray, Father, that at this hour you would hide me behind your dear cross. That these, your people, we hear what you want them to hear in spite of what I may do or say. In the name of Jesus, we pray, amen. amen. <clears throat> On last Sunday, we talked about uh, forgiveness, and we are continuing to talk about forgiveness as being the bedrock of reconciliation. This week, for the week of prayer for Christian unity, we are have as a theme uh, reconciliation. It is the love of Christ that compels us to reconciliation. And on last Sunday, we talked about from the Gospel of Matthew, the 18th chapter, verses 34 and 35, whereas if we wanted to have success in 2017, we must forgive 2000. And 16. And we must forgive what we did or did not do in 16 in order for our lives to be better than the year before. We must forgive. We want to continue with that thought along with reconciliation as being part of what we ought to do. For in the second letter of Paul to the Corinthians in the fifth chapter, verses 18 and 19, it tells us that we are given the ministry of reconciliation. And reconciliation is a broad term that encompasses many of the attributes or the character of the fruit of the Spirit. And one such character that is not named in Galatians 5:22 and 23 forms a basis of what we call reconciliation. We are forgiven, so therefore our ministry is forgiven. Will you please look at the next slide here? on the PowerPoint here. It is a sculpture by the English sculptor Josephina de Vasconcelos. Uh, she made this sculpture or made a sculpture like this. And it was originally named in 1977, Reunion. And it depicted a man and a woman, a woman after World War II, traveled across on foot over the continent of Europe looking for a husband. And it depicts them meeting as a reunion. After 77, this sculpture needed repairs and it was brought back to her workshop, Josephina's workshop. And she reworked it. And in 1995, it was unveiled as what we see here is 
is man reconciliation. So Sophia lived to be just a few months past 100. She was then at that time uh, the oldest, oldest living sculpture on earth. It was on the United Methodist webpage and it talked about reconciliation. Reconciliation amid the political climate that we find ourselves in. We find ourselves as a nation divided, needing to be reconciled. And I thought it appropriate to look at this culture in terms of what we want to talk about in terms of forgiveness and prayer. What brought me to this sculpture, one of the final points of the sculpture, sculpture is you see that both of them are kneeling. We don't know who forgave whom first. And we don't know even why they parted. We, we know that they were once parted. They are reunited. And they are holding each other on their knees. That's what I get out of it, on their knees. And it has drawn me to on our knees as being that of prayer. For without prayer, we can have no reconciliation. And if we want our prayers to be effective in 2017, we must have a basis of forgiveness. Thus, it brings us to Matthew, the 6th chapter, verses 11 and 12. Rick, can you go to the next one? And it reads thus, as part of the example or the model prayer, many call it the Lord's Prayer, the Disciples' Prayer, but Jesus gave uh, this model prayer as part of his Sermon on the Mount. And perhaps you and I uh, know it by memory now. And we teach it to our younger generations to memorize uh, our Father, the child in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And then the eleventh verse, give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us of our debts as we forgive our debtors. <coughs> It is of my belief that within this model prayer that when we ask for our daily bread, ask for forgiveness, we must have forgiveness as part of the view of which our prayers are to God for his answer, his positive answer. So when we pray, we pray from a position of kneeling within our hearts and within our minds, the humbleness of which we ask God for whatever it may be. Mm. But it's ended together with the view of forgiveness. That when we come to a Father who is holy and we come with sin-stained lives, we come, always come, with a view, with a position of forgiveness, of being forgiven and forgiving others. We had talked on last Sunday, the 35th verse of the 18th chapter of Matthew, that God will render those folk or those circumstances in our lives to torture us, to jail us, if you will, if we don't forget. And if you continue to read 
here in this sixth chapter, verses 14 and 15, when you get home, read that. Bible check, Bible check. Read that. We read, if we forgive others, God will forgive us. And if we fail to forgive others, God will not forgive us. It is purposely put there as he explained this model prayer that our prayers are connected, should be connected, ought to be connected from our viewpoint of being forgiven. That is just a privilege to come to God in prayer. To be reconciled to him by the blood of Christ. To be humbled by that mere fact that we have received unmerited mercy from him. And thus we can now as a ministry of reconciliation look at our brothers and sisters. No matter whether they are Democrat, Republican, Independent, does not really matter. We should be praying to him from the vantage point of we being forgiven. And if our prayers are to be answered in 2017, it must be from a vantage point through the lens of being forgiven. No matter how good we think we are, no matter whether or not you did not cuss during the day, whether or not you gave to the poor, whether or not you extended hospitality to whomever, if we do not do it from a basis of being forgiven, hmm, then our prayer is ineffective. We must, as a Christian people, understand that we are forgiven. As a husband, we are forgiven. As a wife, we are forgiven. As a child, we are forgiven. As a worker, we are forgiven. As a doctor, a lawyer, whatever the professions may be, we are forgiven. We are all forgiven. And when we start looking at ourselves as being forgiven and not deserving what God so richly and graciously gives to us, when we stop looking at that, then we fail to see clearly our brothers and sisters and the Christ and the love of Christ that is upon them. No matter how we disagree with whomever who is in office, no matter how we disagree on our spouses, no matter how we disagree on our siblings and, and our family members, our church members, no matter how we disagree, we must look at them through the lens of we being forgiven. If not, our prayers are ineffective to a God who said that he will not forgive us. We still owe the debt of our sin when we fail to forgive others. It is God's word. It is a hard word for us, isn't it now? Huh? Because it now puts the onus on us to be forthright and forthgiving to forgive others even before we come to him in prayer because it says as we have forgiven others, we want God to forgive us. Huh? Well, I haven't had a chance uh, to uh, talk with my brothers and sisters. I'm waiting on that person to come and so we can sit down and we can work things out. Perhaps they can apologize to me. and uh, Perhaps we can see quote unquote eye to eye and, and then I will forgive. This does not suggest that at all. That we have as a journey, as a step-by-step -step journey, it's something that is built into our rhythm of life is to see others and forgive them, regardless of whether or not they said I'm sorry. 
regardless or not whether or not you sit down at the table with them and come to an understanding. All that is good, but we from a standpoint of being God's children must emulate who He is. And it says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died upon the cross for the remission of our sins. That we, no matter how wronged we think we have been, no matter how wrong that person may be, should always, daily, look at that person or persons or people through the lens of forgiveness. That before you say, I'm sorry, I've forgiven you. Before you realize that you have offended me, I have forgiven you. Huh? It is so ended with, give us this day our daily bread. If we want that which is of God, his word, that which is the substance of life, we must come with an attitude, with a mindset, with a posture hmm, of being forgiven. That is effectual prayers that we no longer look at condemnation or through the lens of condemnation to the rest of the world. The trumps will be the trumps. The pharaohs will be the pharaohs that they will be. But unless we look at them as well as any other person through the lens of forgiveness, then we are keeping ourselves in jail. We're keeping ourselves from moving forward in this Christian journey, this reconciliation journey that Christ has given us as a ministry, we're keeping ourselves from moving forward. When we cannot forgive, when we do look at others through, come to, through the lens of condemnation, when we cut short our journey, we make our journey difficult. As we move towards where God wants us to be, when we look at others through lens of unforgiveness, then our journey becomes difficult. We are held back from the full potential that God has given us as his children on the reconciliation journey. Our journey, our reconciliation journey, is that of forgiving and seeking ways on which to forgive. Too many times we get caught up of looking at that one little dark spot on that white handkerchief of life and we focus in on that negative spot and we will not take our eyes off it because that's our nature. Hmm? We focus in on the little minuscule things that tend to stop us from our Christian journey because we are holding something against a brother or sister that happened to us 25 years ago. We just can't let it go. Hmm? Well, 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 she lied on me. Yeah, they lied on Jesus. She misused me. He misused me. Why they didn't that do it to Jesus? Hmm? Hmm? They took something from me. They purposely, all unintentionally, did it to me. They did it to Jesus. And we are expected to show the world on how to go through those things that have offended us, have put us down, have quote unquote made us ill. To show the world that God has reconciled me and I want to show you how forgiveness looks like. I want you to know that forgiveness is something that goes beyond the human comprehension of peace. It goes beyond the logic of an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. It goes beyond all of the stuff that our culture teaches us of standing up for ourselves, not letting people walk all over. We let the word of God flow through our lives that we will stand and still give God the praise. Even though you don't like me, you don't have to like me, and I don't have to like you. But I am commanded to love you, and I would hope that you would love me going by with God's word, the daily word that we are called to love everyone. And we cannot harbor unforgiveness in our hearts. It clouds our vision 
We cannot see him as we ought to see him. As we sung about this morning, we want to see God. Yes, we can see God in nature. We can look at the trees. We can hear the birds sound, sing. We can see the wonders of what we call nature. But if we really want to see others, see Christ in others, then we have to get rid of the unforgiveness. If you really want to see him as he really is, we must see the Jesus in all of his creation. The potential of those strained relationships being reunited, being reconciled. We should be about reconciling. I don't know what that culture had meant to you. Uh, the story is, is this woman who walked all over Europe just to find uh, her husband and they were reunited together. Uh, but it does speak to me that she went looking for him. And we ought to go looking for others to be reconciled with. We ought to go forward and walk over this land looking for opportunities to reunite, to reconcile that which has been torn apart. On yesterday, millions of women marched, demonstrated, People on the other side of the fence said, protested. But they came together with a cause and hope that voices will be heard, that this country as well as the world will be reconciled to one another. There are ways in which we can effectively reunite ourselves as a country no matter which side of the political fence you are in. But we must do it as a Christian witness with the lens of forgiveness. No matter what has been said that offended us, no matter what has been done to set us back or put injustice in our back and front yards, we must forgive. We must move forward with the most powerful tool in the Christian's bag of tools is that is forgiveness. Because it's forgiveness that we push forward. It is by his forgiveness that we live and have our being. It is by his forgiveness that we are able to speak a kind word. It is by his forgiveness that we are able to testify that God is God. It is by his forgiveness that we are allowed to breathe his air. It is by his forgiveness that we are allowed our hearts to be. It is by his forgiveness that we are here in this church to lift up his holy name. It is by his forgiveness that we are here. To say hallelujah. It is by his forgiveness that we can show the rest of the world that no matter how bad things are, God is still on the throne. It is by his forgiveness that we have the mindset, we have the heart to lift him up and let his will be done on earth. The Bible tells us in Romans that he has ordained all of the governments. And we, Christians, ought to lead the way, showing how we overcome that which is difficult, diff that, that proves to be difficult in our lives, with forgiveness. 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 And we must, as part of our effectual prayers, include the bedrock of re reconciliation and that is forgiveness. When we get on our knees, some of us can't get on our knees, I understand that. You get old, you got arthritis, all that good stuff that happens to our bodies. But when we get on our knees and our hearts and minds and approach God in prayer with forgiveness that he has so given to us and we are seeking out on whom that we may be reconciled with, 
and bring them into reconciliation with God, then he hears our prayers. He gives us our daily bread. He gives us what we need for the day. And then, guess what? We get a chance to do it tomorrow. We get a chance to do it again and again. It is a daily journey that we go step by step. I forgave you once. I forgave you back in 1945. Mm, you should still be forgiving that person now. Step by step, we have a journey of reconciliation that we take step by step all the way. And when we do it with a faith that God will right the wrongs, that vengeance is mine, says God, then we do it with the confidence of children that one of these old days, everything will be all right. One of these days, the wicked will cease from troubling. One of these old days, he'll take me to himself and call me home and I will be at rest. Amen. Because I am forgiven. Amen. Because I am forgiven. Because you are forgiven. Amen. Because you are forgiven. Because you are forgiven. 